So I've been caribou hunting twice in my life before. The first time was with my buddy Tim and his dad, and we were just north of the Brooks Range. In this area, if you want to use your rifle, you've got to be at least five miles off the road and away from the pipeline, and you can't use an ATV. This was a very eye-opening experience for me. Tim got a large caribou. He was a beast and hiked out most of the weight. But we got stuck hiking in the dark, almost eaten by bears, and it was the most terrifying and physically draining experience I've ever went through. One of those trips where you vow, you know, never again, never again. But two years later, Tim and I were like, hey, let's do this again. It's going to be awesome. And oh yeah, we're going to do it with less people. His dad can't make it. So we set out, same place, at least we know the lay of the land. And this year, though, it's going to be special for me because I'm going to get the first crack at getting caribou. And growing up in this state as an Alaska Native man, not having taken a large game has been this like, giant hole on my resume of life. <laughs> and you get reminded of it all the time, especially with social media, you know, friends, family, coworkers, just posting about their hunts and their trips. And, it's accentuated even more when you see, you know, their kids, like little Johnny's first moose and like <laughs> little Debbie's first caribou. I'm like, God, ah, little Debbie, like, come on. <laughs> like, I'm 26 at the time. I got nothing to show. They're making me look bad. And, but it's going to be my time this year, my time. I'm going to fix that. So we're off on the hunt and we're out there a few days and eventually it gets to what we think is our last day. We're, we've been holed up on this ridge line, beautiful day, but five or six hours just sitting there, and eventually a caribou comes over the horizon and into the valley below. And it's not a trophy caribou by any means. Uh, it kind of looks a little feeble, maybe. <laughs> and we think it has a limp. <laughs> we, we decide that's gonna be my caribou, because <laughs> we might not have enough time to get another one or see one. So we're ready, the hunt is on, Tim gets off and running, I'm running behind him, and I'm just so excited, full of emotion, energy, adrenaline, it's welling up inside of me. But then I stop and I'm just like, Tim, wait. He turns around, what? I gotta take a dump. And <laughs> I guess I'm a kid too. Um, but I really had to go, and there's no way, you know, nature's calling, no way I could hit ignore, decline on this. I should also mention that Tim gets angry very easily, and this really set him off. <laughs> and, but as I scamper away to do my deed, uh, I hear him laughing, and I can't help but laugh myself. So that's all done, and now we're really ready to start the hunt. Uh, we're running down the valley. It's about two miles or so, and we just realized that while I was fertilizing the tundra, he, the caribou's run off, and we don't know where it is. We put our bags down and start searching, and we eventually we find it. It's laying down in this little divot, like right behind a little hill on the tundra. So well played, caribou, well played. <laughs> but Nelson's here now, it's my time. So I get ready, I get set, it's like 20 yards away, you know, a gimme shot. And Tim makes some noise, I'm aimed, it stands up, and I go to pull the trigger and nothing happens. The safety's on, and the caribou runs off, and I'm failing right now. That was, and we start chasing it, and it stops again. And so I have another chance, but by now I'm so embarrassed and ashamed and feeling horrible that I'm just shaking, you know, just trying to aim at it, shaking so much, and I can't take the shot. And it runs off again, and Tim is angry with me. And we're just, running after this thing all over the tundra, and it's definitely limping. Um, <laughs> so I think that's why I didn't just leave, but it stops again, and I'm just thinking, what luck? Or, and I have a plan now. I'm going to kneel down. That'll stop my shaking, and I'll be able to take the shot. So I go to one knee, and I aim. And then this horrendous cramp makes me stand up, <laughs> and I'm beside myself. The caribou runs off, and Tim is just you know, doesn't know what to do, and I'm so glad this wasn't being filmed, but it would have been a great, you know, how not to hunt video, and I could see it going viral, hashtag epic fail, and like, who taught you to hunt, Elmer Fudd? Like, you know, just, 
and I tell Tim, I'm giving him excuses, you know, like, hey, you take the shot. I clearly am not doing this right. And he's like, no, 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 this is yours. We're going to stay here all day till you do this. <laughs> and we probably could have the way it was moving, but um, <laughs> we've crisscrossed the tundra so much that we're back to our bags. And I'm, <laughs> I'm able to lay down on one, and it, the caribou stops, and I steady myself. I take aim, I take a deep breath, and I take the shot. And it's good. And I'm so relieved. Like, that's the first feeling. And then, you know, I can do a status update now, right? Right? <laughs> but we get to the caribou. Tim congratulates me. And I'm kind of feeling a little judgmental now, though. It looks even smaller than I thought from the distance. <laughs> and if caribou were Christmas trees, this is Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. <laughs> And so I'm not too proud at this point. But we start field dressing, loading it up, and it, I can't help but notice it's all going to my pack. I mean, he's got the gear, and that's heavy, but I finally ask him, and he just stares at me, deadpan, serious. You caught it, you carry it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I, I knew how much he carried on the last hunt, so I got this. But as we hoist that caribou onto my back, and I feel the full weight for the first time, I can't help but wonder, you know, maybe, maybe we should have waited, you know, for like a smaller caribou, like, you know, <laughs> travel size. And that would have been better for me. But we got, you know, five plus miles to hike out, and it's painful, it's horrible, it's awful. It's the second worst hike of my life. And, but we get back, and we get back to Fairbanks. And of course, I split up the meat with Tim. But on my end of things, since it is my first catch, and in our culture, it's tradition to give that away, and especially to elders if you can. And I was able to give some to my relatives in Scammon Bay, who I hadn't seen, haven't seen since I was a little kid, to my grandparents in Mountain Village. They said they made spaghetti out of it. <laughs> and my mom and dad, of course, in Fairbanks, who were kind of, they didn't think they should be lumped in the elder category just yet. <laughs> But I made that call, and they, they deserve it from just all they've been through. And at this point, though, I'm finally feeling proud about my hunt. And it's that feeling I had there that will forever be special, important, and way more meaningful than any social media status update ever could be. Thank you.